Hi, everyone, and thanks for, for joining this session. So my name is Clément Verna. I've been um, in the federal community for a bit more, like around five years now, uh, mostly into the infrastructure side. The, the, I also maintain the federal base image, the container base image, and uh, also been involved in the federal core OS working group. Uh, but today I wanted to chat about something that is uh, uh, a little bit related to the federal community, but uh, not so much into like the day-to-day -day, uh, things that we're doing. And this thing is like uh, I'd like to, at the end of this uh, of this session for uh, for you all to be a little bit more curious about curiosity and try to answer this question like can we can we learn to be more curious? So let's get started and. So the, the first step, I think, is to try to find a definition. And it's quite funny because we, we actually don't know very much about curiosity. If you look at the uh, research that we do uh, in the neuroscience field, or like to try to understand how our, how our body, our brain works um, when we trigger like, those, those feelings of curiosity and we, the, uh, we are eager to learn new things, uh, there are not that, that many. Um, and this is mostly due because, like, Curiosity is a very wide concept. And when uh, scientists or researchers want to study something, they will narrow it down to some specific uh, aspect of curiosity. So for example, how we play, how we explore, um, how this, like where the desire for information comes from. So the whole concept of curiosity as a global uh, thing is not very uh, well known or well not something that we know uh, a lot about. In terms of etymology, we can uh, just look at where the, the word comes from, and it's uh, very related to cure or caring, and like this idea of like trying to find a way to solve uh, problems or like, trying to cure uh, people or trying to be careful to care about uh, some situations. Um, there is a, a definition that I personally very like uh, that I, I find like very powerful from the Global Curiosity uh, Institute. And they defined uh, curiosity as the intentional mindset to challenge the status quo, explore, discover, and learn. And what I really enjoy about this definition is particularly the challenge the status quo and really this idea of not accepting what is the current norm or like trying to go beyond and understanding why we are doing certain things and why, uh, why not uh, changing uh, those things. Um, in terms of like trying to look at the opposite of, uh, of curiosity, so following this definition, I think we really can define it by conformity and this acceptance of the status quo. Like, okay, this thing is like that. We've done this forever the same way. Uh, I just accept it and I'm not going to be uh, curious about why we've done those things and like trying to uh, generate new ideas. Uh, we can look also at maybe trying to find like the different types uh, of curiosity. And in uh, his book, uh, Ian Leslie, the book Curious, uh, comes up with three main categories or three main types. Uh, the epistemic curiosity, which is really about going deeper, trying really to understand uh, something into, into depth and knowledge. So that's more like something related with specialization. And a good question for this is like, how does it work? Uh, there's the diversive curiosity, and that's maybe the one that we are the most uh, familiar with. Uh, that is everything that is new, really the related to exploration, you know, and like a, a, a good question is like, what is this? Like what is something new, like very uh, interested into learning about it. And finally, something maybe we, we are a bit less uh, familiar with, the uh, empathic curiosity, which is more in, to understanding the feelings and thoughts, uh, something more related with inspection. And like a good question would be, why do I feel that way? Like really trying to, to understand like uh, our, our feelings or other people's feelings. All right, so now we got a better idea of like uh, curiosity, but why should we care now? Like why, why is that uh, something that we should be interested in and like spend some time? Um, and really, it's related to the environment we are living now and the world in, in this current state. 
uh, there is like this uh, acronym VUCA uh, for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous uh, that defines uh, like today's world, like where things move really fast, everything is very complex, very connected. So a, a small change somewhere will trigger like uh, big things. And in that environment, answers don't last. So the value of an answer is not very, very long. Um, and in the opposite, the value of questions and questioning how we are doing things is rising because we are looking for new ideas, new ways of doing. Um, a good example of this, if we look at, uh, at answers from the past that don't really work well now in, in today's world, it's to look into like the startups innovation world and there is a very good example in the hospitality industry. Uh, if we looked at Marriott, founded 95 years uh, ago, like very well established uh, hotel chain. It's actually the largest hotel chain in the world by the numbers of, of rooms available. Um, it's got 8,000 properties uh, in 131 countries and territories and over a million and 400,000 rooms available. So 95 years to, to build up this, this like empire. And here arrives new ideas, new ways of thinking and challenging the status quo. Uh, Airbnb founded 14 years ago. Uh, that, and in those 13 years, they achieved to be present in 220 countries, um, over 100,000 uh, cities with active listing, 7 million listing. And I think something that every hotel chain or every hotel uh, empire would have dreamed to achieve it's like hosted over 100,000 guests during the, the Rio World Cup in, in 2014. So we can see that really uh, challenging the uh, status quo and trying to come up with answer, new answers to maybe problems that we uh, that were from, from the past or are, are quite uh, interesting in, in today's world. Um, so, okay. Curiosity, it's important. It's something we want to uh, to to be uh, more aware about. But but like why why we are not more curious uh, as adults mostly, uh, and this really like you know when when we start our our journey on this uh, on this world as young children, we are very curious. We ask a lot of questions. There is like this studies in the United Kingdom that. Uh, came up with those numbers, like on average, uh, children ask uh, 40,000 questions from age two to five. And with a pick around five, uh, four year old, we have like up to 300 questions a day. So like really just like very eager to learn like a lot of questions. Uh, and by the time we reach uh, like uh, uh, adulthood, we are like on average less than 10 questions a day. So yeah, there's something that is happening between that time. Um, one big thing is like the, the curiosity can have like a negative connotation. I, I saw in the chat like yeah, curiosity killed the cat, uh, but it's also not something like, you know, this notion of challenging the status quo or challenging uh, teachings or things like that. It's not something we are, we are encouraged to do. Uh, so schools play an important role there. Uh, you know, we, we learn that teachers have the knowledge and that we should not really challenge them. We are there to learn from them. Um, and also, there is not really the time to develop curiosity at school. Uh, the goal of school is really to get you to, to learn some concepts, learn some things. And the, the goal is to, for you to pass the exam. It's not really to be more curious or to be challenging what you've learned or, or things like that. It's very focused on, okay, we want you to, uh, to learn those things, pass, apply them in your exam and move on. Yeah, by the way, do you know why, why the sky is blue? It's, it's one of the, the most asked questions by, uh, by a three, three-year-old child. Um, and yeah, when, when I was preparing this, I was like, oh, yeah, by the way, why the sky is blue? So if you're interested, there is a, a great video on the spaceplace.nasa.gov. So if you're curious about it, go and, and check it out. Um, so. Can we learn to be more curious? Is it like something that we should should be easy and that we can we can learn to do, to do? Um, I would say yes, but but there is a but. There is always a but. Um, on, on the positive side, curiosity is is like a muscle that we can improve. And like every muscle, you know, if we exercise, we practice. We we're just building that uh, that muscle. 
but also if we are not really in a, we don't practice and we don't exercise we don't think about it it's something that will deteriorate um, there's a big part about like the environment and the cultural uh, aspect of the environment we live in uh, the more this culture this environment will be open will be sensible to vulnerability uh, pretty much a lot of like the psychological safety uh, field um, the more you have this in the environment the more people will feel uh, welcome to challenge st status quo ask questions maybe feel like okay i don't know about this it's okay i'm just going to to ask uh, questions um, and also i think we we are in the um, Generally, we are in societies that don't necessarily reward questions. Uh, we tend to shut them down. And like, you know, there is this famous quote, like, don't bring me problems, bring me solutions. Usually, if people come with questions that uh, brings problems, we don't really welcome them with uh, with uh, open arms and say, ah, oh, no, I don't have time for that. Like, <laughs> come back when, when you have like a solution for it. Uh, there are also enemies of curiosity. Um, Weirdly, knowledge is uh, is one of the big big enemy of curiosity. The the more knowledge you have about something, the less curious you're going to be, um, and it's um, it's something to be mindful. Like uh, the more deep you're going to be in a subject, maybe the the less eager you're going to be to be willing to learn, or you you will assume that you already know everything about it. Uh, the fear aspect is really related to yeah, this like vulnerability, psychological safety. You know it. it it's always scary to go and ask questions, even more if you, you started to challenge things that have been done the same way for, for a long time. Uh, and time. Time is also a, a very big factor, you know. It takes time to get uh, curious to go and look at, uh, at things that you're not necessarily familiar with. Uh, about time, there is this great quote from George Carlin, like some some people see things that are and ask why. Some people dream of things that never were and ask why not. And some people have to go to work and don't have time for all of that. So I think that's a, a, a good summer, summary of why it's so difficult sometimes also to be more curious. All right, so if we look into how we can try to put this in practice. Um, and I would say, start with a question, uh, but Question can be a bit uh, a bit tricky, you know. You can quickly uh, be like seen as someone like a question jerk or like try to bully people with questions. Um, I think the key to that is really ask questions that are where you are authentic. You know, you ask questions because you are really interested in the answer and really trying to understand, like trying to challenge this, this statu status quo, explore, discover, learn. Don't ask questions to prove your point or try to make the person wrong or, or thing like this. I think you, it, it really needs to come from, from a good place. Um, there are like a framework that uh, Warren Burgett uh, proposed in his uh, book, a More Beautiful Question, uh, that I think is, is quite interesting, is to start with why, really why to try to understand the problem, to come back to this idea of challenging the status quo, like why are we doing this thing that way? Then generate ideas. What if, um, you know, in the case of Airbnb, the two founders, they woke up one day and say, oh, what if we put some mattress in our flat and rent them for, for people to, to come? So we, we get a bit of extra money uh, to pay our rent. And uh, it helps also folks to, to find a place to, to sleep for the night. And then how? So once you define your problem, you generated some idea, how are you going to, to start solving the problem? Um, unfortunately, and I think it's even more true in, in like our, our field that sometimes is very technical and we, we, we tend to, to go too much into like uh, start with solving the problem, like jump into the how uh, when we don't really have a good idea of the why or, or, the, or generated enough idea around that. So, I think this framework is quite useful on this and having uh, trying to, to do those in, into phases. All right, so um, how to practice also, like I think uh, asking questions is great, but if nothing happens after that, um, it's not going to be super useful. Uh, so 
I think there is a big, uh, big um, importance about experiment and actions. And in in a sense, it's like trying to make your curiosity productive, like right? trying to get some output out of it. Um, this also relates a lot uh, to like the environment you are in. Like, uh, can you easily make experiments? Is uh, are, like is it easy to test things, even if it's going to fail or not? Uh, I, I think this plays a, a great factors, but. It's a very important part of uh, of like cultivating this curiosity uh, mind mindset and like being more uh, more productive about it. And yeah, like the one of the first step also is just being aware about uh, like what is curiosity and being curious um, and being intentional about it because I, th I think it's not necessarily something you know you don't you don't wake up in the morning. And the first thing you, you the first thing you think about it uh, just after uh, eating your breakfast or so is like oh yeah I'm going to be curious today. Uh, it's not something we are like very intentional about it. So uh, starting to switch the mindset about that and maybe you know start of the week or start of the day say okay what what I'm going to be curious about today or what are the opportunities in my day to find something to get uh, interested about. Um, and also, I think we each have a part in creating that environment where it is safe to challenge things or ch safe to challenge ideas or ask questions. Um, so we are also um, we can also be very much active into into that aspect. And yeah, some tips to get started. You can really get started today. Uh, start reading some blog posts, book articles about things that you're really not familiar about. Like, there's this idea of trying to be a constant novice, you know, forget what you know and try to start in things that you really don't know about. Um, in terms of introspection and maybe being a bit more curious about yourself, uh, ask how did you feel today and maybe why? And something like really practical that you can start to do, uh, you know, in the next following day during this conference. You know, go and have a chat with someone you don't know and try to learn as much as you can about them. Or go to a talk where you are a complete novice, you don't you don't really know about the subject, and it's not necessarily a talk you would you would have uh, you would have gone. All right, finally, so you know, all of those great things about curiosity, but what about Fedora? What why what can it do for, for Fedora? And I think it comes back to our, our four foundations, freedom, friends, features, and first. And I can see how curiosity will play a role in all of this. Uh, freedom, you know, this idea of like challenging status quo, really like the open source community has been built on this, like really trying to challenge uh, how we make software and how we uh, make software available. Friendships, you know, by being curious, going to meet new people, you're going to make friends and you're going to be interested in other subjects. Features and first, really, like I put like this sentence highlighted in the slides, like, yeah, we are committed also to innovation and trying to find uh, trying to find the good questions that are going to lead to the answers of tomorrow and not necessarily relying on, on those answers from the past. So maybe investing more into questioning what we're doing, questioning some of uh, of our status quo and generating new ideas, trying to to think big, you know, try to really uh, think out of the box. Um, and yeah, I've got like uh, like one question. I, I, I didn't really want to come up with solution for like uh, how we should use curiosity uh, in Fedora, but more with a question. So how can we make the Fedora community uh, a community where we challenge status quo, discover, explore, and, and learn. Right, and now, like, what question do you have for me? Okay, so how do you convince uh, others your questions are coming from a place of genuine curiosity and friendly rather than have an agenda? <sighs> I don't. <laughs> I think if you start to think that you need to convince someone, it's probably that it doesn't come from the right place. I think this is really. It's what I meant, like being authentic. Um, 
you know, if it's really something that you are going to be curious and interested in, I think the other person will feel it. Um, this is probably much easier in like, uh, you know, uh, like face to face or like even virtual contact. But I think like we, we do use a lot uh, written communication and this is probably much harder to convey there. So maybe adding some clues in, 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 in the question, if it's over an email chat or something like that. I think in, in face to face, uh, we tend to, to feel those type of things. Like, is the person, is the person to going to try to, to trap me? Or, um, or is it, uh, really just a question because the, the person is really wanted to learn more and be curious about it? Um, I think it's, yeah, pro probably the, there is also a big part on listening and how you, like, once, once you ask the question, uh, how you listen to the answer, like, do you listen to reply or do you really listen to, to get the information and to uh, understand the other person's point of view? Um, all right. I did, how did you get interested in this topic? What inspired you? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So, um, I listened to a podcast, uh, about, uh, curiosity and I, I was like, oh, you know, actually. I don't know much about curiosity. I like, let's start by being curious about it. And uh, this is something that is really so. The more the more I've been uh, like curious about it, the more I've discovered that this is something that is quite big into the learning and development area. So, like the, the people that work uh, in that space uh, are really invested into that, but it. I think it's really in, in our in our field, like the technology uh, side, it's really uh, something that we should uh, spend more time thinking about. And when we see like all all the innovations that uh, you can drive from, uh, like the curiosity, creativity, uh, all those things are very linked together. And I strongly believe that this is how we we going to solve a lot of uh, of the the problems that uh, that we have. In the future, <laughs> Matthew, would like to hear more uh, actionable things for Fedor. Yeah, I, actually, there is like uh, there is something that is uh, quite interesting. So, um, at schools, there's the some schools have, have started to do things that are called uh, uh, question storming where you come up with a problem and you just ask the kids to spend 10, 15 minutes just asking questions. So as many questions as you, as you can ask in 10, 15 minutes, uh, you don't think about answers or anything, uh, just really focusing uh, on, on questions. And that's to kind of practice this, uh, this muscles of uh, asking questions and asking good, good questions. Um, but yeah, that's maybe something, you know, next time we have a, we have a problem or we have like something we want to, to generate ideas about in Fedora. Let's maybe just really focus on asking as many questions as we can for a certain period of time and, and go from there instead of trying to jump in straight away into uh, the solution and how we're going to, uh, how we're going to fix it. Yeah, so Marie says like this would be uh, this may be more of a comment, but I think it would be great to see mentors in Fedora foster curiosity in mentees, how they can do that as well. Yeah, in my opinion, in like I think in the Fedora space, like uh, it would be nice to see maybe this uh, as a community how we want to try to foster this like curiosity and be more more curious about different things or like you know. I think what, what applies to the individual can also apply as a community, maybe try to go and see how other communities are doing things, maybe like things that are completely unrelated to uh, to Fedora, so like even to IT, you know, I'm sure there are like other communities uh, that we could learn from or just like see how, how they do things. So um, I think that, that could be like something quite uh, quite interesting to explore. Um, how, as a community, we we becoming more more curious. Thanks, everyone, and I hope that uh, you're a bit more curious about curiosity, and that you're <laughs> going to start to ask some questions. And um, and yeah, it was very nice to to present this. <laughs>